Uh, my name is Ritu and uh, I will be walking you through uh, various different areas of Azure through this series. And this is the first of that series and the main reason uh, basically is to help you um, get started. So those who are already working on Azure and who are expert on Azure have been deploying application, creating infrastructure, probably this is too basic for you. So I just wanted to uh, set the expectation at the very beginning that this is meant for people who are new to Azure or planning to come to Azure or just thinking about Azure. And this is a purely demo intensive, so I will not be spending a lot of time um, using this slide, but I have uploaded this slide in this um, live meet meeting window so you can get some of the resources which will help you get started. So to begin with, what I'm going to do, I'm going to share my screen. Let me share my complete desktop. So yes, so we have what I was talking about is that um, you can create a free account, which is basically free for 12 months. And once you create a free account, which is free for 12 months, you get a certain dollar value associated with it, which means like either you fish all the dollar value in, in let's say, seven days time, so you will not be able to that, use that as your account or you use it effectively. Let's say you create a resource and delete it immediately so you don't incur a lot of cost. If you create, let's say, a virtual machine and keep it for longer time, you can pay more. It's like electricity. So you can leverage that free Azure account uh, for a longer period of time. So that's the duration is maximum up to 12 months, which is one year. So it's good for you to really uh, open something like that and practice if you want to really practice Azure while learning Azure. That really helps. And what I, I talked about is I basically went into uh, Azure portal and use my login to log into this portal. And right now I am in my Azure portal. Now you can see that this Azure portal has got certain things loaded because I have created few resources. You can see the name of those resources over here. I would like to draw your attention at the left hand corner where if I click this home page. So what I wanted to really highlight over here is that we are trying to trying to create some resources. But before we try to create the resources, let me know where each of the resources are placed. In Azure, it is like a within a resource group. So every resource you create should go inside a resource group. Think of resource group from a Windows concept as a drive. So you either you create a folder or a file, it should go inside a drive. A file cannot be outside of a drive, right? So resource group is like that. But you might be, as, a, as an individual, you might be having um, a lot of uh, access within your organization from many different uh, Active Directories. So you can see that I have got access to few different Active Directories, few different organizations. And if I select one Active Directory, and then I can see the list of um, Azure subscriptions I have got access to, I can select one or many based on if I'm working frequently on two of them, I can select two and both of both the resources will come in this portal. So these are all customizable. You can also change the look and feel. People to nowadays use a lot of um, dark theme in their in their editor, in the browser. So dark theme is quite popular. So you can see here that we provide you four different color schemes. So you can select um, each any one of them if you'd like to pick up the theme you wish to work with. And then you have got something like notification, which basically talks about like if you perform something and then that got successfully deployed or there is some issue, you get to see them. So it is on a current session based on when you have opened this browser. And then since then, if you are doing something constantly, it will keep uh, adding into this list. You can also clear this up if you are doing a lot of tasks and then you want to only focus on what is current, you can clear that up by yourself. However, it's in Azure, 
everybody needs to log in to do something. So once you do log in and then you do something, Azure keeps track of that. And that's what we call as activity log. So if you want to see something historical or something, let's say, outside of the session of this browser, you can go back to in time and then see, let's say, what you have done yesterday night. So you can um, click on that activity log over here and then go into that. You can also go into, let's say, um, something called Cloud Shell. So Cloud Shell is pretty important thing and we will see how we can spend a little bit of time over here in the Cloud Shell to create some resources. And we will use this Cloud Shell to create the resources. So it basically allows you to either use uh, PowerShell or uh, CLI, that's a Linux bash based command line. So depending on whichever area you are comfortable, you can choose one and then create. Now the, for the first timers, when you click on that cloud shell, it basically is a browser based command prompt. You can think of that way. If you create a cloud shell, it basically creates a storage account to store the state of your activity. For example, if you create a bash uh, script and upload it into this cloud shell, it will get stored into the storage account. You can even create folder. You can see that you can create a folder or create a new session. You can even open an editor and then it will show you the list of files it created in that cloud shell, which means that Let's say if you are into something and then you want to go back. For example, I have got a couple of SSH keys and it will show me all the SSH keys which I have created. Now it, you can just copy paste. You don't need to know where the, those files are were created when you created them, let's say five months back. So it is very convenient for navigation purpose because then you don't need to remember exactly the location. So it is sort of like a helper uh, kind of tool which lets you do a lot more stuff. And in, in, terms, of, um, in terms of this um, Cloud Shell, you can also have it locally, which means that if you use Windows, you can use um, the Linux subsystem like I'm using Ubuntu Linux subsystem and then you can use Azure CLI and then can connect to uh, that Azure CLI to perform any activity you want to perform. So that gives you the local experience, but that requires a lot of setup and it sometimes needs a heavy thing and most of the challenging stuff is that that you need to make sure that the cloud shell you are using locally is up to date. So for example, today I was checking my local cloud shell. I don't use local cloud shell so frequently because I mostly prefer to use this browser based one, which is always up to date, has all the tools and utilities installed for me ready. And I just want to execute the command and it will work exactly as is. Uh, I saw that it, I was using a older version, so I had to upgrade that. So let me show you that experience. So let me um, open that and let me sh know if you can see my screen uh, with Ubuntu uh, command prompt. So you should be able to see my screen with Ubuntu command prompt and I typed az dash dash version and this will tell me what is the current version I'm using and that should match with the cloud shell. Then everything I type here should work exactly as is otherwise I might find challenges for example if there is any change in the in the commands in the modules it won't work for me. So. This should be 2.9, uh, as I remember today morning I updated that, I was having 2.6. So you just need to make sure that if you're using local copy of that, it is up to date. So this is 2.9. You can see uh, in my screen it is showing that I'm running 2.9. Now, <clears throat> how do I connect to Azure? So one command you need to run, which is AZ login. So if you do this, what it will do, it will take you to a browser and in that browser you enter the Azure credential 
and this will generate a device ID. And then in the browser, you have to also provide this device ID. That's how your local prompt is getting connected to Azure. So you can work with Azure in many different ways. That's what I wanted to share with you. One thing is portal. You can go to the portal and create directly things like from there, which is good in terms of learning experience. But when you really deploy your application in a CI CD in a DevOps way, you don't use a portal to create it. Nobody is allowed to really go and use a portal to create that. You should automate that. And this CLI really gives you that ability to create the automation. So I'm already logged into my session. It's It doesn't require a uh, 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 login, frequent login. So once you log in, it, it can save in cache and it is alive for some time. So I don't need to do that because I just uh, tried some time back. So what I can do, I can show you all the resource groups I have created. So let me just oh, show you a few uh, command, but before that I just type AZ uh, and then press enter. What this will do, this will show me the list of Azure commands uh, which is installed, which I can use um, in my local machine, right? Uh, so at the end of the day, uh, if you want to talk to Azure, you need to leverage REST API. And these are the command utilities, which basically wraps around those REST API calls for many different activities. So if you see on top, it has got account, ACR, AD, and then respective meaning of each of the modules uh, or the commands uh, the CLI is using. So if I am working with, let's say, resource group, which is the first requirement for anything I want to do in Azure. So when you create an Azure account, first thing you need to do is to create a resource group to be able to create a resource. That's the first step. So let, let us try doing that. Let us first see what all resource groups I have. So that's a, that's a way to browse things. So for example, I say AZ group. Group stands for resource group. And then I want to see the list. Now, if I say like this, it'll give me a complicated JSON-based output because that's the default output format. You can change the default output format. However, if I just type enter, uh, exactly leaving it as is, it'll give me all the resource groups, their location, their name, uh, etc., in a JSON-like format and then we'll be dumping into the screen. I want to make it more, uh, better readable. I, I, I want to show you those steps. So you can see that it's, it's a purely JSON-based output. And if you notice the last one, this is one resource group, highlighted one. And that contains basically the name, location, uh, properties like whether my provision is successful or not, etc. So I will pause for a moment for you to really observe how that really looks like. So these are all different properties. Now, not all the properties are so interesting to you. So maybe you want to have, let's say, a tabular view, which is kind of better and concise. So if you, if you want to retrieve the view in a tabular format, you can just say output and then say table. If you say something like this and enter, this exact same output will happen, but in a tabular format, which is much more concise, but you can see that it it, it removed few of the fields uh, from that output. For example, it didn't show me the tags, uh, neither the type, it only showed location, status, and name, which is good enough for me. Now you can see that there is a resource group called RG Dell. I was supposed to create that resource group, but let's create something different. So if you want to create a new resource group, so how do you create that? You use a AZ and then you say group, that's for resource group. And then you use a verb called create. And when you say create, you need to provide at least two things. One is the name. So I can either I can use dash dash name and then say RG Dell that will identify that I need to delete this resource group because that's creating um, something temporarily. And then you not need to also mention the location where you want to create this. Now, Azure is located in um, 50 plus uh, region. So you can choose any one of them based on wherever 
your customer is and closest to your business, etc. But it's up to you to select the region uh, here. So what this is going to do, this is going to create a resource group in East US region. And resource group creation is generally pretty fast. Now, once this gets successfully executed, you will be able to see that resource group is created with a JSON output, which means then you know that you are successful because it said succeeded. And then if you run this previous command, which basically brings in the list of resource groups, you will now see additional resource group called RGDEL2. So now your resource group is created. Think of it like a drive. You sub I've got a drive formatted now ready to create files, folders, etc. inside that drive. Now we, we will do that. But before that, I would like to also show you a few CLI stuff, which basically would help you uh, going forward. For example, I was using something like group uh, to create resource group. Now, you, you, if you are using it for the first time, you don't know what to do. So with the group, so you can say AZ group. And then just say help or dash H, which is the short form of help. And if you do that, it basically tells you that you have got few commands within this uh, group, right? So the command are like create, delete, exist, list, show, update. All of them are kind of common across all different uh, modules, right? So if you think virtual machine. So you will also find create, delete, exist. So it basically helps you build up a habit of writing the CLI script. And that's how the CLI or the bash world really works. So if you use any other CLI uh, tool for any other uh, technology, you have seen this uh, behavior. So it's it's in line to that behavior. Now if I, if I go ahead and say that, hey, I want to, let's say, uh, I want to um, create a create a uh, resource group. So you say that this is group and then create, but I don't know what to do after that. So what parameter I need to pass. So you say create and then you say help. So if you say that now it gives you not only all the arguments and with mention like what is required. So you need to, mu you must provide a location and the name of the resource group you are creating, right? So these are the two mandatory parameters. Rest all you can ignore. However, you can add them if you want to add. So provision is there. So you can do a on-screen help. You don't need to go and search for it and then go to the documents and read it. So you can read it from the CLI tool itself. That's another convenient way of getting help immediately. Now, what I want to do inside the resource group, I want to create a virtual machine. So let's see how that experience looks like. Now, virtual machine is VM. So AZ VM. And then if you say, I want to see what all VM really offers, you start typing the help command, as you learned. And then it will show you that all you can do with the VM. Now, VM is a bit complicated than resource group. So it, that's why you see a lot of um, such subgroup commands or subgroups are available and all of these subgroups basically tells you what they do. Now we will focus on creating a VM and we will use the minimum um, sort of the command. So what is minimum? Now if you if you want to really focus on only on the create that's a, that's a command where I want to create a new VM what you want to do is basically you want to go into your help um, text and you say create. If you type that out, azvm create dash h, it will tell you the help for creation of VM which is larger than the VM help because now you have all the options inside create. So think of it like a folder, subfolder, and inside that subfolder you have got all the files. So it can go really complex. So you can see that now it become a huge because it gives you the examples also how do you build that out. So we'll not be seeing it. So I will let you explore by yourself so you can 
do it by yourself. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you how we can create. Now, three things are mandatory to create a VM. And three of them are the name of the VM, the password of the local admin, uh, the, the local resource group name, and what is the image you want to create the VM out of, the base image. Now, to provide the name of the base image, you need to know what all base images you have. So let's explore what all images we have. So in the VM itself, we have the list of images. So you say VM image list. And then I will just type it out and it will give me the list of images. I just don't want to go into the detail, but I want to show what all images you can use in each of the region. And remember that these are the available images you can leverage. However, VM allows you to have your own custom image and then use it. So there is a different a discussion. If we go into a deep dive session on VM, we'll talk about it. But just imagine that you have got list of images already available in Azure and you can pick up from there. And then we will pick up the one which is Windows Server 2019 data center, right? And let me use that name of the image. Now, to create a VM, what you need to do, you say VM and then say create. And then you remember that you have to first provide the resource group name. So the resource group we created RG Del2. And then you need to provide the VM name, like say VM Del2. And then I, you need to cre give the image name. So the image name is dash dash image. And then when 2019, I remember it because I did it, but you can figure it out from the list of images. So nothing to uh, write it down. So let's say data center. Now, if I do that, the VM creation will take you back to my Azure portal and go to the resource groups where basically the list of resource groups are available and show you the resource group which is created just now and then I also show you that it is right now empty right so we'll go inside the rg del2 that's the resource group i have created through uh, the cli and then if you see inside that resource group you do not have any resources available right now it is all empty so you say that no resources to display that clearly identifies that I don't have any resources. I haven't started the VM creation process yet in my uh, CLI. So what I want to do, I wanted to um, have this window open side by side and have you see how it looks like when I really kickstart the VM creation process. So if I just have this view now and then say enter, what it'll do, it'll ask me the the local administrator password that's mandatory. If the the command is correct, then it will prompt me. Um, remember, another thing is that whatever the required parameter is, if you don't pass it on uh, by default, let's say I, if I don't pass the, the image, let's say, it will ask me what is the image I want to use. So it reminds me of that. So let me create a password. Once I kickstart this password creation process, the VM creation will kickstart. And the moment VM creation kickstart, it will start showing up the resources in the portal. So you will see uh, a lot of resources as part of the VM. Remember that virtual machine itself um, is not sufficient. Uh, it requires, let's say, a disk, storage, network, public IP addresses, subnet and all of them will be individual resources for a single VM. So you are basically building a car where you need a lot of um, different uh, devices and equipments to fit in together, right? And then that car becomes a single car, similar to that. So you, if you come back over here and then say refresh, but basically now the same RG Del2 will show in this portal is couple of resources which is already created. Now, 
you can just wait and watch the the resource creation process in the portal and this is something you can do in the portal which i did in the cli but i wanted to give you a flavor that creating something in portal is fairly simple because it's all about the browsing experience and we are all browsing uh, internet for many many years and it's not difficult for us to really go browse and figure it out but it is really important for us to understand like if you want to do a same same task again and again let's automate that and when you are comfortable writing script to automate this process this becomes much much easier now it is finished which is amazing right so it means that now my vm is ready so if you see over here you will see that um uh, the the output shows that it is complete and then inside that also it shows me all the details so you can see that i am seeing the vm is running state and this is the private ip address this is the public ip address i have got and then i have a resource group inside which this vm is created and the name of the vm is vm delta right that's the id and it's all uri because of the restfulness of the nature of azure so you see that vm is created now now like that you can create all different resources in azure so this is how you start this is the beginning now i wanted to also take you to some of the other uh, quick stuff which is related to vm but let me just increase that and if i see the list of virtual machines i have created in that so i say az vm did you not notice the the sequence it is the same similar to what i did for resource group i vm list if i do that it will give me the list of vms right now this gives me the list of virtual machines i have in my local machine right and then it shows me um all of them in a in a very complicated json like output so which is good because it gives everything but it is not readable at times so what i wanted to do i wanted to probably filter that out and focus specifically to my own vm which i just now created right the vm is rg uh, the vm is vm dash del2 so to do that i can provide the name of the virtual machine and the name of the resource group and then it will show me the list so this is crazy so you can see that in in the command line it shows all the uh, all the vms which is kind of very complicated so what i can do i can just make it a tabular output the same thing and i say output table and then it will strip that out de detail and make a few columns out of all those columns and then give me at least few other things but i'm i may not be happy with the output so i want a better output which means that i want only my preferred column for example i want the name of the vm and the operating system of the vm so i i don't get that from the default table output and if i want to really get that from this output what i need to do i need to really modify them so let's try to see what all additional querying capability you get in the in the cli script so you can use query query will allow you to filter or change the view of your output so for example i want to see the um name um operating system uh, names uh, so to do that because it is a list so it is an array so i have to get an output in form of array so what i need to do i need to get an output in form of array this is a json querying format and then inside that i need to provide the the property and the property of my operating system name if you notice here is not the root property it is the sub property so basically if you look into here that is under something called a storage profile this is storage profile this is the root property within the json and then um not the data disk i have a image reference within the storage profile and inside the image reference i have got the sku right which basically tells me what is the image i'm using so if i want to go into that level i what i need to do i need to use that all of them into this so i have to say os that's the operating system that's will be the name of my column and then i say storage profile 
you have to provide the right casing profile and then you remember that we had something called image reference it's always camel case and then skew is small it should ideally show me a tabular output of all the VMs and with their operating system only. So I can bring in their names as well. If I want to bring in their names, I can bring in their names. So now you can see only the operating system of my VMs are getting displayed over here, right? Which is mean that I can now filter this output. I can add additional column. Let's say I can say I want to also give a name and then I say name. And that will give me the list of names and their operating system. So name of the VM and the operating system. So you can literally change the way how it should look like. So this is how you play with CLI. And these are all common way of doing it. You can even do a typical Linux type of uh, grep. Let's say I want to grab data. Wherever I have got data, it should show me. And then it will show me the list uh, with only the data center uh, operating systems. And then if it finds, and you can see that it finds all of the output which has got data inside it. So either in the name or in the operating system. So you can do all the Linux type of activity in this uh, command. So this is what I wanted to share with you and talk about it.